So yes, you are very important to me. Okay, my dears, we are three minutes in, so let's get started. Um, I've got a picture up for you guys. So take a look at the picture and tell me what you think you see going on here. It's a little small, I think. I can make it, here, let me do this. Let me put it in our chat so you can pull it up yourself if you are interested. So at first, I thought that that was, he was fixing like the piano because I didn't see the kids. Um, do not look at that thing I just sent you. That's the slides. Never mind. Let me pull up. Um, yeah, right? He looked like he was picked. And then I saw his kids, and then I have a really far, far out guess. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, it's, it sounds stupid, but it, it kind of makes sense. It's going to be right on the money. That's good. Okay, have you ever, like, seen something where it was, like, painted underneath, but everything else looked normal, so it was more of a surprise? Oh, so like it comes across like maybe it's painted on the bottom or maybe the bottom isn't put in so you could see the inside of the piano. So someone's playing and you can see someone playing the piano. OK, maybe. You have a wild imagination. I would have never thought of that in a million years. I can't tell if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing. Um, I don't know what's going on in the picture. There's the link to the actual picture. Um, I don't know what's going on in the picture. Uh, where do you think this is happening? And kind of what details might tell you that? Maybe in a park. Okay, good. Larry, why do you think that? Uh... Jade, why do you think that? <laughs> well, why do you think it's not inside? Why do you think it's outside? Let's start with that. Oh, the sunlight. Mm -hmm. Good. And then, go ahead, Jade. Yeah, jar of concrete. And because you can see, if you see the shadow, it's a tree. So then you see like well. a perfect shadow. And then if you look really, really closely, you can see leaves at towards the um, left mm -hmm. corner. You mm -hmm. can see leaves at the bottom. Um, and the shape of the floor is interesting. So not a street, maybe. Could be a sidewalk, could be a park. I think a park's a pretty good guess. But there's some detailing in here that's helping us to see that, which is what I want you guys to focus on. Ignore the access and ability questions. That was actually for another class. Okay, guys, we're going to talk about Jamestown today. So uh, what do you guys know about Jamestown? That's literally like 95% of what we thought of, or like learned about in uh, social studies in eighth grade. 1603. <laughs> Just a whole thing on Jamestown over and over and over again. Pocahontas, that's, that's where Pocahontas takes place. Pocahontas takes place. Yeah. Because the slide. Um, so you guys might already know a lot of this. Um, if you studied this in eighth grade, we're not going to spend a lot of time here. We're going to spend about two days here. But I want us to think about perspectives. Okay. We definitely have a story about Jamestown, the one that's told in Pocahontas, the one that most of us learn. Um, and that's told from one perspective, as most history is, right? That is told from the perspective of the person who came out on top, right? The white man is telling this story. Um, but I want us to also think about the other perspectives of the story. What would this story look like if it was told from the Native American perspective? And so we're going to look at two writings, one by John Smith and one by a descendant of a Native American who um, whose tribe, whose people was one of the um, was one of the groups that was 
involved with Jamestown, okay? So um, before we do that, I wanna show you a clip from um, Chinua Achebe's The Danger of a Single Story. Now you guys might've watched this last year. I know several English two teachers showed this video last year and they probably showed you the whole thing, which is 18 minutes long. We're not gonna watch it. We're gonna respond. Huh? What, Jade? Oh, yeah, I watched this story. Okay. So I'm just going to remind you of what this is, okay? It, the clip we're going to watch is about three minutes long, but I definitely want you to have that in mind as we think about um, the readings that we're going to be doing and kind of the perspectives that those readings are coming from. So I'm going to mute myself, and then we will watch less than four minutes. It's a little over three minutes, okay? But let's listen to what she has to say. It's definitely where I want your mind as we're gonna do what we're gonna do. I come from a conventional middle-class Nigerian family. My father was a professor. My mother was an administrator. And so we had, as was the norm, living domestic help who would often come from nearby rural villages. So the year I turned eight, we got a new houseboy. His name was Fide. The only thing my mother told us about him was that his family was very poor. My mother sent yams and rice and our old clothes to his family. And when I didn't finish my dinner, my mother would say, finish your food. Don't you know people like Fide's family have nothing? So I felt enormous pity for Fide's family. Then one Saturday, we went to his village to visit. And his mother showed us a beautifully patterned basket made of dyed raffia that his brother had made. I was startled. It had not occurred to me that anybody in his family could actually make something. All I had heard about them was how poor they were, so that it had become impossible for me to see them as anything else but poor. Their poverty was my single story of them. Years later, I thought about this when I left Nigeria to go to university in the United States. I was 19. My American roommate was shocked by me. She asked where I had learned to speak English so well and was confused when I said that Nigeria happened to have English as its official language. She asked if she could listen to what she called my tribal music and was consequently very disappointed when I produced my tape of Mariah Carey. She assumed that I did not know how to use a stove. What struck me was this. She had felt sorry for me even before she saw me. Her default position toward me as an African was a kind of patronizing, well-meaning pity. My roommate had a single story of Africa, a single story of catastrophe. In this single story, there was no possibility of Africans being similar to her in any way, no possibility of feelings more complex than pity, no possibility of a connection as human equals. So that is how to create a single story, show a people as one thing, as only one thing, over and over again, and that is what they become. It is impossible to talk about the single story without talking about power. There is a word, an Igbo word, that I think about whenever I think about the power structures of the world, and it is nkale. It's a noun that loosely translates to to be greater than another. Like our economic and political worlds, stories too are defined by the principle of nkale. How they are told, who tells them, when they are told, how many stories are told, are really dependent on power. Power is the ability not just to tell the story of another person, but to make it the definitive story of that person. The Palestinian poet Murid Baghouti writes that if you want to dispossess a people, the simplest way to do it is to tell their story and to start with secondly. Start the story with the arrows of the Native Americans and not with the arrival of the British, and you have an entirely different story. Start the story with the failure of the African state, and not with the colonial creation of the African state, and you have an entirely different story.
Okay, so what's so bad about a single story? It gives people a perception of you that might not be true. Absolutely. And if enough people repeat that perception, that becomes truth. Yeah, they create and promulgate stereotypes. Absolutely, right? So um, I want you guys to keep that in mind as we read. It's called The General History of Virginia. It's written by John Smith. Um, John Smith was this guy in Pocahontas, right? The hero. Um, but John Smith, um, since he's the one telling the story, John Smith, um, well, he's telling a single story and he's telling his story, okay? So let's get some background on Jamestown. I'll read these next three slides. Um, and again, this might be a review for you guys if you've studied it a lot. In 1607, a party of Englishmen landed in a place they called Virginia. They followed in the footsteps of Sir Walter Raleigh, who had visited Virginia at the time, this included North Carolina, with a party of settlers in 1585. The colony founded by Raleigh's party failed. It was weakened by a lack of supplies and a regular contact with England. And um, recent studies, I'm adding this, are showing that maybe drought had something to do with it as well. To the people who already lived in the area, this was the land of the Powhatan Confederacy. It was a vast regional network of allied communities living under the leadership of um, <laughs> Wahansanaka, who was known as Powhatan. Uh, contact between the English and the people of Powhatan Confederacy was fraught with misunderstanding and conflict. This owed a great deal to the fact that the English were in America to form a colony and make money for the Virginia Company of London, the corporation that had launched them on their voyage west. The Powhatan, on the other hand, lived out their values of kinship, allyship, and reciprocity in a way that was at first incomprehensible to the English and then later was firmly rejected by the English. The English made their first settlement in Jamestown. This was a swampy port a short distance from the main villages of the Powhatan Confederacy. One of their leaders was John Smith, who infamous, infamously recounted a story of being saved from certain death by um, Powhatan's hands by his daughter, Matoka, more commonly known in the U.S. as Pocahontas. The real story is a lot more complex, and it's likely that Smith misunderstood a ceremony intended to adopt him into the community and that he was not at that moment at the risk of dying. Okay, so we'll be looking at multiple perspectives of Jamestown. We're going to start with John Smith's version. That's kind of the traditional version that um, y'all have heard of and that many of our like Hollywood narratives are based on. And then we're going to um, look at Jamestown through the eyes of a Native American. So um, we're going to read um, the general history of Virginia. And it's a piece of text. You're going to read it and you're going to make notes in the margins using Cami. Now, I have figured Cami out, I think, and we can all use it. Yay. Um, and then also, I'd like you to read in your novel that you have selected. And as you're reading, I'd like you to think about places where there could be multiple perspectives of the same story. You're probably getting one perspective, whoever the narrator is or the protagonist is, you're probably getting their perspective. But how might this story look different if it was from someone else's perspective? So that's kind of what I want us thinking about right now over the next couple of days, okay? Any questions so far? Nope. Okay, so you have an assignment on Cami. Let me show you a couple of things that might be why Cami isn't working for everybody. First. All right, miss. Are yeah. we using Cami the whole year? Yeah. 
on the yeah. I got some bad news. in the corner it says the trial. Yeah, it says we have a trial. You do. And as soon as it's done, I shall spend a hundred dollars and get a license for the whole class. But I thought I'd wait until the trial was over before I spend a hundred dollars. That way I'm really getting the most time for my <sighs> but yeah, I've already committed to doing this because I happen to that's just saves you money, so like if you think about it, it saves you for the short for the short term. Well, because you could actually you no, because you could save up, so you're less like so you're not spending it all at once. I know. See how invested in you guys I am if I'm buying this for us. Um, but more than that, you guys can use Cami in any class that you have. I've bought the license. You're on my license, or I will buy it. And so you can. I mean. It doesn't have to be sent to you through Google Classroom. When I go to Cami, and I've made Cami an extension, but when I go here, I can open right from my Google Drive or open from my computer. So I'm going to click open from Google Drive, and it pulls up anything that I've downloaded, and I can use Cami on that to annotate. So if you have like a, a history paper coming up and you need to pull documents, you can do that. Um, let's see. Here, this is, we have a story to tell. It's by, uh, yeah. It's something which we may or may not use in this class, probably not. But it's another perspective on Jamestown. But it loads it up for me, and now I can use this, even though it hasn't been assigned. And I've checked this with my student version, so I know you can too. So here I want to highlight this. I like blue, so let me just highlight that right there. Oh, I thought I highlighted it. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, you're not sharing your screen if you think you're sharing your screen. I do think I'm sharing my screen. You're not sharing your screen. Because you said you're going to highlight this, and I was like, oh, she's not sharing her screen. That makes me very sad. Okay. I thought I was sharing it. Now, can you see it now? Yes. Ah, okay, now this is exciting, right? Well, you can figure out how to work, Cami. But the thing is, you don't have to have an assignment for me. You can pull it up. Okay, another thing for you guys to know is you have to have Cami enabled. I know I'm not sharing my screen right now, but let me do this. Um, there is a menu. Okay, here we go, story of an hour. Okay, now I will share this screen. Present now, Chrome tab. I think I'm doing it, maybe I'm not. Okay, so now I have the story of an hour pulled up. Where it says open with, I can pull this down and I can click my connected app, annotate with Cami. If this is not a connected app for you, come down and click the plus sign and it pulls up a list of apps that you can add and you wanna make sure that you add Cami to that. And once you do, you can, I'm gonna exit out of that, you can annotate with Cami and it'll turn it into a Cami assignment. Okay, that was for my AP lit Could class. you do me the biggest favor? Yes. Do everything you just did over again. Yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's one more thing. Just stick with me, and I'll do it all over again. Um, there's okay. one more thing I want to show you guys, and that is this. This is the link to my site license. If you don't already have it, you can use this link to get Cami. You're not sharing your screen again. I'm not because it is in your chat. Oh, okay. I thought you were. No, um, so you, can, you sounded like you were, so I was like, it's okay. Um, so you can use that site link to access Cami, or you should be able to, and that should put you under my domain so that when I do pay for it, you continue to have access to it. Um, if, um, okay, and so you're going to read and annotate the general history of Virginia, and I just want you to think about John Smith's perspective on this, and we're going to talk about John Smith on Thursday when I see you guys again, because he is, um, well, we'll just see what you guys think of him after you read his text. Okay, so if you understand all of that, oh, no, wait, 
Um, there's something else I want you to do. Okay, so let me walk through um, one more time for Larry and then we will um, move on. Okay, so Larry, for you, when I am in, let me share my screen. When I am in um, Google Drive, I can open up a PDF and once it's open at the top, it's gonna say open with. And if I pull down this triangle, I can pick Cami to view it with. If Cami is not a connected app, then I need to come down and click this plus sign where it says connect more apps, and I'll need to add Cami that way. The other thing I can do is I can actually go to the Cami page and if I do camihq.com, sorry, um, <clears throat> it should pull up my account. And once my account is pulled up, I can pull right from my computer or from my um, Google Drive. I can pull the assignment up. I'll have to log in, which I'm about to do. I'm sorry, my computer's a little slow right now. I hope I don't lose you guys. <clears throat> so I will log in with Google, or I will try. Okay, I'll have to sign in and then it'll let me pull from my drive. I can open from my Google Drive. I can open from my computer. Um, that's what yours looks like. I don't think you can create a classroom assignment, but um, if I were to pull right from my computer, if I downloaded an article I wanted to do, I would click open from computer and it would pull up all of these downloads and I would just pick one and it would upload and then I could um, annotate it in, in Cami. And there we go. Okay, does that make sense? I hope so. If not, you guys can reach out to me and I will walk you through it. You can show me your screen. Okay, last thing I want you guys to do is as you're reading, I asked you to think about where there are multiple perspectives, right? And so you're gonna make an entry into your interactive notebook, all right? So let me show you how to do that. Your interactive notebook is located in Google Classroom. So let's go there. All right, once we're in our Google Classroom, we're gonna go to Classwork. And if you scroll down, I took all the creation myth stuff and I put that at the very bottom of this page so we weren't getting bogged down with it. If you look under classroom resources, there is our interactive notebook. You should already have your copy made and it should be in your Google Drive. But if you have not made a copy, you pull this up and then you click file and make a copy. Um, you cannot annotate on this copy. I haven't given you that permission, but you make a copy of the entire presentation and we will call this, just your name is fine. I'll call this Miss Ritchie's English 3 Interactive Notebook. Once you are in our interactive notebook, you can put your name right here. Here you go, you are Miss Ritchie or whatever your name is. On the next page, you can even take a text box. It's the T with the box around it. So I might right here type my name, Kelly Ritchie. And then you wanna go to literature. You can either scroll through all the pages until you get to literature, or you can click present. Once you're in present, that's what makes it interactive. So I'm gonna come down and click my literature tab and there we are. 
I don't this is the most quarantine thing I've ever done. I tell you what, but you will thank <laughs> me wrong. if you keep this all. If you keep this with you, this will serve you well next year. You'll have all your notes, okay? Once you're on the literature page, you're gonna exit the present mode, and here you are, right at the page you need to be. So then to make your entry, you just draw a text box, and now you can make your entry, right? So I might say, I am seeing Elsa's perspective. But I think that William's perspective would be different. And then I would explain that. And I would clean up my typos. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? So those are the two things you're gonna do. You are going to read and annotate the general history of Virginia. And then in your own novel that you've picked, you're gonna do some reading just however much you feel comfortable with. Uh, the goal is to finish the novel in two to three weeks, okay? So make some progress in that, and then just write a note in your interactive notebook about perspective. Where do you think somebody else's perspective might be different from the character who's talking? If you understand all of that, you can go and have a great day. If you don't understand that and need me to walk you through it again or have questions, stick around.